This is a 2002 Toyota Corolla Spazio that imported from Japan. It's a JDM version, so Japanese domestic market. Some people say this is the best family car that was ever produced. Some people say that it looks cute, but I'm gonna argue that this is the best daily driver you can get for the money. It is actually a seven-seater. It has two seats in the trunk and it has the ultra-reliable Toyota Corolla 1.8 liter engine, four-cylinder. It's a 1ZZFE engine that is also used in some of the Lotus vehicles with superchargers and you can actually get a TRD Toyota supercharger for this engine if you wanted to really go crazy. But I actually imported it because it has an all-wheel drive system and that's very useful for the snowy and icy roads if you have if you live in an area that has a lot of snow, ice, this is the vehicle for you because it is a small, relatively small, but very, very spacious inside. I imported it from Japan and bought it at an auction with less than 50,000 kilometers on the odometer. If you're interested to see how to import a car from Japan, please stay tuned. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the process, about how I selected the car, and also about the registration here in Canada. I actually use import services from the company that's called Japan Car Direct. So stay tuned. In this episode, I'm going to tell you how to find the car, how to use those services from Japan Car Direct, what to look for at the auctions, and some tips and tricks on how to get a good vehicle. This vehicle actually passed an out-of-province inspection without any problems. The only thing I had to do is to change the tires because the tires on it were 20 years old and of course they had to be replaced although they were in very good shape. So if you think that the prices in North America for used cars have gone bananas and you want to import a nice clean non-rusty low mileage car from Japan and you don't mind the right hand side steering wheel stay tuned i'm gonna tell you all about it okay this is their website japan car direct and you see that they have a team of people who work on making bids i believe i worked with yoshi who is the this guy on the very right here so they have a bunch of information on their website and uh, if you click on the menu here so but what we're interested in is to uh, vehicle search engine so that's the most important because you'll be looking for cars here uh, i'm already registered but if you're not uh, registered you can uh, uh -huh, they have the button here please register and let's get started so they were really fast to reply once i emailed them so let's go back to the search engine here is the search engine and for example you can start from Toyota. I'm a Toyota guy so uh, I only was looking for Toyota. Actually I was looking for Honda CRV but they are uh, a bit expensive. So so because I was looking for a daily driver I needed a vehicle that either are uh, on the American market and as well as on the Japanese market or vehicles that have a lot of components like engine, transmission, um, wheels, brake system and everything uh, the same as uh, the same in Japan as well as in American market so for me I did look at Honda uh, but they are pretty expensive so you won't be able to find the low mileage Honda CRV because um, they're very popular everywhere so everyone wants to get a nice little Honda CRV that's all-wheel drive once you get registered you see much more uh, information here so for example I can click on um, this vehicle and right there you have photos on the left here uh, sometimes you, you get more photos sometimes less and you have this report this report is a beast of its own um, check they have they have a guide on uh, their website to uh, read the report I already forgot about it because it's been a few months ago uh, but for example five I know that it's it's a very good mark I would recommend looking at 3.5 to 5 
uh, mark. That means that these are very good um, by the American standards uh, vehicles. So below 3.5, I wouldn't I wouldn't be uh, looking at those unless you're looking for something special and you, it's a project for you. But I was looking for a, a daily driver. So uh, let's get back here and look at Toyotas and I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, the system. So I was looking for Toyotas because I like Toyotas a bit more. They're a bit more robust and they're a bit uh, a bit easier to maintain, I think. First of all, the bigger the vehicle, the higher is the uh, transportation uh, fee. So for a vehicle like a Tundra, you'll pay quite a lot in shipping and most of the price is shipping. Also, I have to tell you that I was looking for a four-wheel drive vehicle. So that was a must because I live in Canada, it snows here, it's, uh, it could be slippery here, and four-wheel drive it does make a big difference. Uh, again, I was looking for something that is cheap, and RAV4s are just too popular. So first, I would put uh, the uh, currency to uh, United States dollars. So here on the right is probably the, the, the most useful um, the most useful number is, uh, first of all, the start price. That's when where the auctioneer wants to start the bids. So uh, right away, 22,000 is quite high and it's an S. I don't know what that means, but I would be looking for a number like five. This is the mileage and condition. So a condition would be the mark that the auctioneers uh, give the vehicle. So I would be looking for like 4.5, uh, 3.5, 5 is very good, so you won't be able to get a good price on it. As you can see, all the 5s are very high. And some of the auctions are already sold. So, for example, you see they started from 12,900 uh, and sold for 20,000. So, it's it was a fierce uh, bidding and it's a good price and very low mileage. And it's a 2021, so it's like one year old car. So I was looking for a vehicle that is uh, 15 years uh, old or older because then I won't be paying the import fee, which is quite high for newer we vehicles. But if you choose a low mileage Toyota, it's a perfectly fine vehicle. You can still drive it and drive it because in uh, Japan, um, they do maintain their vehicles very good. They don't have, they don't, the vehicles don't rust as much as they rust here in North America. And um, in general, people drive them less. So you, you'll, you, you still can get a low mileage uh, vehicles and a Toyota, it doesn't matter if it's 20 year old and or 15 year, years old or five years old. You just look at the mileage and if it's not rusted, if the mileage is low enough, it, it doesn't matter the age. So I would right away go for uh, 2005 or older. And now you can see that some of them sold for 4,000, for five, for three and a half thousand. And these had, so for example, RA, I know it was uh, kind of repaired or rebuilt. Four is a very good, um, four is a very good uh, mark and it's 110,000 kilometer. It's nothing for a Toyota, sold for three and a half thousand. It's a pretty good price, but I was looking actually for something even lower. So I had to go for models that uh, are not popular. So, and what I found is that there is a vehicle called Toyota Corolla, where is it? Toyota Corolla Spazio, which is actually the same as Toyota Verso in, uh, or Toyota Corolla Verso or Toyota Verso in uh, Europe. So, if we go to Toyota Corolla Spazio, these have 1.8 or 1.5 engine. And of course you want a 1.8 engine. It's a ultra reliable Toyota Corolla engine. Uh, you want a low mileage. And uh, why did I uh, choose this one? Because 1.8 engine is all wheel drive or you can get it in all wheel drive. So for example, this one is white, full time all wheel drive, three, three and a half mark, uh, which is, I would still buy it. And 93,000 kilometers, it's like nothing. So. Uh, we have some other ones, uh, for example, and you see that the prices are uh, much, much lower, like twice lower or three times lower than Toyota RAV4. And if you don't mind a little smaller vehicle, uh, it's a it's a still a great vehicle because they also come with a, a third row seating. It's very tight. It's only for kids, but you can still get it. So what I was doing was looking for this model. There is another vehicle. Um, 
and that's called Toyota, Cor Toyota Yaris Versal, I, I believe, uh, in Europe, and it's called uh, Toyota Funk Cargo. It has a 1.3 or 1.5 engine, and again, the 1.5 engine comes with all-wheel drive. It's a smaller vehicle. Uh, it's not as spacious as the Toyota Corolla Spazio. Uh, Toyota Corolla Spazio is already a small, quite small vehicle by American standards, and this one would be tiny, but it's all-wheel drive. It's cheap on gas. Uh, you can get parts from Europe for it. Of course, it doesn't exist here in, in North America. But you, you can get it dirt cheap, like dirt cheap, uh, like 71,000 kilometers, uh, sold for 660 bucks. And then you'll be able to ship it for like, I don't know, two, three thousand. And you'll get uh, a nice low mileage, little all wheel drive uh, a vehicle for uh, that you can ride in town for less than 5,000. Where can you get those prices right now in North America, right? Let's have a look at uh, this one. Pretty low mileage for uh, Mark IV. Very good car. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the, au the auction has ended, but we can check the statistics on it. So it was not sold. We want uh, United States dollars. And this is the photo you get. You don't get much more. Uh, let's click on the details. And it's 1999, so it's pretty old. Um, and it doesn't say if it's all wheel drive. So there you go. Uh, f forget it. Um, so fun cargos are a bit uh, harder to find with all wheel drive. But if we go to the Cor Toyota Corolla Spazio, we can get good vehicles um so let's put it uh -huh, they're all i believe they stopped making them at two, two, 2005 so you, you get only um basically up until 2004 model years let's have a look at the uh, for example this one which is we know that it's full-time all-wheel drive it's there in the description it's 2001 um it's a 1.8 uh, liter engine let's have a look at it so we still have two days before the auction starts, so we can inspect it, we can uh, ask for more information on it, we can read about it a little bit, uh, we can watch, uh, we can look at the, these pictures. Unfortunately, we have only two pictures. We don't know what's uh, what's it like inside, but also this report will tell us a little bit. 3.5, it's a good mark. And then you have uh, some marks here, if they found a scratch or something. So A1 is a scratch. A2 is a bigger scratch, A3 is a big scratch. So, and then they have B, um, B, which is a small dent. So it has some dents, little dents and little scratches, uh, nothing terrible. And it's four wheel drive. So I see uh, at the bottom here, it's four wheel drive. Actually, it's not four wheel drive. It's what we call all wheel drive, but they branded it as a four wheel drive for the Japanese domestic market. So this little uh, sign is, uh, it tells us uh, right away that it's a four-wheel drive vehicle and we can buy it. We, it, it you can probably get it for a thousand or for a thousand uh, between one thousand one thousand five hundred dollars and i can tell you later i will tell you later about all the expenses that i incurred importing it to, into canada and you can kind of estimate how much you will pay uh, for a vehicle based on your auction uh, price so there you go, I was looking at these ones and actually I bought exactly this vehicle, but 2002 white uh, and exactly with the same uh, kind of uh, wind breakers here or under uh, above the windows um, and um, everything actually looks exactly how I got mine. So mine, I believe, had also 3.5, but it had 3.5 not because of something outside, but because inside it was quite dirty. Uh, so outside it was probably 4 or 4.5, but inside it was 3.3 or they would even maybe put it at 2.5 or something. So the average came out to 3.5 and it also was under 50,000 kilometers and I got it for 140,000 yen. What do you do once you find a nice vehicle? So, so we have still two days to the, uh, to the auction site. So so after I registered for the, uh, the website and uh, uh, emailed them to get me into the system, 
uh, during the holidays. Uh, they, they told me that they require a 50,000 yen deposit via PayPal uh, and they can then start inspecting and bidding your vehicles up to 1 million yen. Inspections are uh, done before the bidding, usually on the day of the auction, and they are 3,000 yen per inspection. I asked them, oh, do, is this better or that one is the better auction house? They said, no, there's no much difference between the auction house. I had actually many questions, which were kind of silly, They, because uh, I wanted to know too much about everything, but they, they just, it's their daily routine, buying and selling and importing and exporting. F for them, it's like, don't worry, just find a vehicle, we'll inspect it and we'll ship it. So they also don't know any information about the previous uh, owners. It's nice to have an old grandpa as an owner, but they don't know it. They won't tell you it, eh, about it. So what do you see on the, the auction side? And their inspection is all you get. Then the ocean freight to Vancouver was taking two, three months uh, from the date of purchase. And that's roughly what it took for, for my vehicle to arrive in Vancouver. So it's still pretty good, I would say. And then I tol told them, uh, can you have a look at this vehicle, which was almost exactly like this one you see on the screen. And they said, we'll inspect it. So they inspected it uh, and then they write a little report. They don't write a lot, but they, uh, for example, they start the engines, they check if the AC works, they uh, look at the undercarriage, they look for oil leaks, they look for coolant leaks, uh, they look at the tires, they look for the uh, chips in the windshield, um, they look for all kinds of things, they listen to the engine, uh, but it's still kind of a, a visual, they can't really drive it. So for my vehicle, they uh, came out with a report that says, uh, that said, engine starts, idles and revs fine, no smoke or vibrations, no sludge, coolant okay, no oil leaks, tires at 20%, some cracks in tires, uh, spare is okay. So when they say no sludge in the oil, indeed they, the vehicle came over here and there, the oil was clean, I didn't need to change it. I changed it anyway after I drove it. Uh, from Vancouver to my hometown, the coolant was okay, uh, no oil leaks, uh, tires at 20% that they said. Actually tires were pretty good, but they were 20 years old uh, and some cracks. I didn't see cracks. So uh, again, you have to adjust the expectations when they say that there is little sludge in the oil. For the American person it means that the oil is clean. So the standards there and here are totally different. For them, if it's slightly dirty uh, it means pretty clean <laughs> for us and if they have s they if they would have seen some of the oils that are in engines that people drive here in America they would say this is like throw away this vehicle it, so they also said the cargo area is okay uh, the undercarriage surface surface rust on suspension bits boots okay body as is in diagram as in the report windshield chips small uh, seat cover parts missing so there was a seat cover in my vehicle very weird black kind of seat cover and it was disintegrating I'll show you later in the next episode uh, and they said that this is seat cover has parts missing and I double checked with them if the seat is okay and they said the seat is okay it's just the cover uh, so the passenger seat uh, rear seats are dirty with stains and indeed there were a lot of stains here so here they were correct and I kind of had my expectations already there uh, the dashboard AC vent area has a small hole for GPS wire so indeed uh, when I received the vehicle there were a lot of wires sticking out of the dash uh, they, they are done neatly so it's not something that kind of is weird and broken um, but there are still some wires sticking out which which doesn't but which don't bother me uh, ceiling liner uh, slight stains rear area had scratches so indeed the liner had again some stains it looks like coffee stains or something so somebody spilled coffee or tea uh, a lot in that vehicle maybe kids drove in it uh, in the back um, no burns ac uh, was working okay no lag or no shock from t turning on uh, check lamps are okay, lights are okay, mirrors are okay, windows are okay, wipers are okay, power steering are okay. So that's basically what you would expect from their uh, report and their inspection. 
and what is important for you to pass the inspection once you, you get the vehicle to your home place is to see if there are no uh, coolant leaks, no oil leaks, and all the boots, rubber boots, are okay and they're not leaking, not cracked. Uh, so that's the most important because that costs a lot of money to uh, correct the oil leak, to correct the uh, coolant leak, to correct the boots, to exchange the boots. Those are expensive. So if you have any of those, forget it. It's, it, it would be prohibitively expensive as a daily driver. But if it's a toy and you don't mind spending money on it, okay, uh, bring it with whatever. But just keep in mind that you'll, you'll have to repair uh, everything that's wrong f to pass the inspection uh, in your home uh, town or your area and these inspections vary so sometimes you can get away with something sometimes they're very very strict so in Canada I know they're very strict so I was uh, making sure that I don't have any leaks whatsoever so then I, I told him oh, okay perfect bid on it for 140,000 yen and if you don't buy it, the bid for a Toyota Punk cargo that I found uh, for 120,000 yen. So, but long and behold, they bid on the uh, Toyota Corolla Spazio and I got it exactly for 140,000 yen. Then Yoshi introduced me to a broker in Vancouver that would help me import, uh, make all the import documents uh, once the vehicle comes to Vancouver. And they also sent me, so once I paid um, for the vehicle and paid for towing within Japan to get it to the uh, ship, uh, to the shipyard. Um, he introduced me to the broker uh, and then they sent me all the documentation that I need to uh, process um, the vehicle here. If you're looking for a daily driver, you have little options if you're looking for something nicer like a Land Cruiser uh, you you won't get a good price for it uh, just forget it uh, Land Cruisers are so so popular so expensive uh, everywhere um, well yeah you you can you can look for something but uh, a good one low mileage relatively low mileage you won't get it below I don't know 12 14 thousand so yeah, uh, for example here, uh, they started with 14,800 and somebody bid 17,870, but it was not sold because the owner said, no, I'll wait for a better price. And you see this all the time with Land Cruisers. Everybody wants a Land Cruiser and they know that the prices are high for it and they wouldn't sell it for, for cheap. Here, there's a one that was had some repair done it. I don't know the story, you have to look into it. Uh, but it was sold for 13,000. Um, but if it's uh, a nice mark like 3.5, 4, 4.5, you won't get it for less than 15,000, let's say. And then you'll, you'll be lucky to get it for 15,000. As you can see, uh, they're just not sold for that price. People are not willing to, to sell it for that price. I know some people like Subarus, but Subarus often have oil leaks and unless you're really you're really uh, sad on a Subaru, I would say stay away from it, get a Toyota or Honda. Uh, it could be an older one. Uh, for example, there are a lot of uh, Honda uh, Accords, for example, like older ones that you can get for relatively cheap with low mileage. Uh, again, uh, Accords are still quite popular and you'll get exactly almost the same model as you would get here just the steering wheel is on the other side so you get all the parts you can get all the parts for it and people know it and it's just a popular model that that you want um, that you won't get cheap there are weird vehicles here you can get very weird vehicles like i don't know what is this jade still looks okay um For example, like this little tiny Honda's uh, logo, you can get them dirt cheap, but you have to investigate what is the engine in there, can you get parts for it, and so on. So I was specifically looking for all-wheel drive and that limited my search even more. You can get those uh, little Daihatsu trucks, um, 
those little Daihatsu trucks or like minivans but again you won't find parts for it so unless it's a unless it's your toy uh, you don't want to import it just for a daily driver uh, and also they're pretty dangerous there's no front end uh, if it gets into an accident you'll probably break your legs uh, they had to terrius they have them in europe it could be a nice uh, buy uh, especially you can probably get it very cheap uh, and it's like little SUV that's four-wheel drive. A Terrius kit, I wouldn't get it. It's very small. But Terrius, I would get it. Um, it's a nice vehicle and you probably can get parts from Europe. So it's still not as bad. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a look at what I paid for the vehicle. All right, I made a little document to have a look at what I paid for the vehicle. So the actual price of the vehicle in Japan at an auction is one thousand was one thousand three hundred to one thousand four hundred dollars Canadian dollars, but that's a very small amount from what you're expected to pay. So this is important to be able to calculate everything uh, and estimate how much you will pay once it's here and registered. But including their fee, uh, I believe it's under one thousand dollars it's like 600 something canadian dollars or us dollars uh, then there's an auction fee export charges then there's shipping from japan to vancouver which is like three and a half thousand canadian dollars so f even for a little car like that it's easily three thousand and more and for a big vehicle like if you would buy a tundra or a, or a land cruiser you'll pay probably five thousand so you, you have to keep that in mind and when i showed you the prices for land cruisers that are fifteen thousand at an auction uh you can easily add to that many 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 more uh thousands of dollars then there is the freight insurance it's all included in this five thousand thirty nine uh canadian dollars uh, inland transportation um, and the car price as i said then uh, i had to store it additionally um, at the port in japan because it was waiting for a ship and if it's waiting for a ship more than i believe 40 days uh, you have to pay for uh, for the storage cost there is a customs broker um, fee which is i believe the customs uh, broker fee uh, is just 250 dollars this is the brokerage but you have to pay three three percent uh, import uh, disbursement fee uh, b3 gst non-taxable um, this probably uh, means that there's no tax for toyota actually canada now has a free trade agreement with japan that means that the japanese made vehicles uh, can be imported without i believe charging the gst or this or this import uh, fee so one of them you don't have to pay because it's uh, according to a free trade agreement between japan and canada so that was pretty good saved up some money uh, then there there are terminal charges you can't get around that uh, cost customs excise fee and that's all included in the 625 dollars <coughs> then uh, you you no longer can pick up the vehicle from the uh, vancouver port for some reason uh, why would they do that maybe for COVID, maybe for some for other reasons but you can you can no longer do it so you have to pay somebody to tow it from the uh, port to the nearest gas station or somewhere where you want to meet and it's minimum hundred dollars so there you go you have to pay hundred dollars just to for someone to tow it out of the uh out of the port which which is silly i don't know why they did it probably because of the COVID. Then I had to fly to Vancouver from Edmonton and it cost me only 60 bucks. So very cheap, there are cheap flights there. That's, I can't complain. I had to buy a temporary transit permit. I actually had to buy it twice because first time mm, I thought I'm gonna be driving it, but they did not clear it through customs. Uh, so it already arrived and it, it should have cleared on Friday. I believe I bought the permit but it didn't clear so i had to wait another week pretty much for it to clear because they don't work on on the weekend so then i had to pay for gas to drive it home which was 126 bucks no big deal uh lodging i slept actually in the car and i'll show it in the new uh, episode in the next episode um i had to sleep in the car at a campsite um 
arrived very late, uh, started my trip again from the campsite very early. So I basically slept for like five hours or so or six and then uh, went on my way again. Okay, uh, then I had to take Uber. I had to take Uber to the um, to the airport. I and I also used a service called Popper Ride, which is like a um, ride sharing, uh, not like Uber, but more people driving to work and can pick you up and uh, drop you off somewhere for um, a very small amount. So it cost me fifteen dollars to get from the airport in Abbotsford to Vancouver, and then I actually had to take an Uber still. Uh, so one of these Ubers is from Vancouver to the port. Uh, then I had to uh, put uh, LED uh, daylight uh, running lights, uh, daytime running lights. Uh, so that's what we need to have here in Canada. As soon as the car starts, you uh, these lights have to turn on. Of course, Japanese vehicles don't have it. So that's one of the expenses that you have to have and modifications that you have to have so they can wire it but i didn't really want to wire it because who knows what they do with the electronics i just bought those little led stick on um, lights and uh, you can connect them to the controller to the little voltage controller that would turn them on uh, when the voltage of the battery is above 13.5 i believe and then it turns them off if it's below that so when once your car is running y your alternator is charging it should be from uh, from around 13.5 to 14.5 and that's when they turn on once the voltage drops below 13.5 uh, that's normal voltage of the battery about 12.6 or something like that um, then they turn off uh, so it was a really easy uh, wiring uh, and cost me like 34 bucks uh, then uh, i had to request the inspection paid nine dollars for it pre-inspection so how they do it actually they do a pre-inspection check everything and tell you if something is wrong uh, or obvious and then if for me for example i just needed new tires because the tires to pass the out of province inspection here in canada the tires have to be uh, less than four years old i believe uh, and these were 20 years old but they looked really good i still drive them by the way so and they were made in japan and it's a totally different story uh, made in japan lasts so long uh, you, you i just can't believe it no comparison with chinese tires but also maybe twice better than uh, made in u.s tires uh, i would say so then the final inspection is when they told you the obvious things they go through it very uh, in a very detailed way and they charge you a little bit more so as i said i had to buy new tires and because i needed to be i needed this uh, car to be on the road like right now i uh, bought chinese tires so there you go that's the irony i i would say never buy chinese tires but here to get that size um that fast I had to just buy Chinese tires because I bought like an all season, I believe, uh, Chinese made tires. So that cost me $531. And then the total would be almost 7,000. So a little bit less than 7,000. So there you go. Uh, if you buy a vehicle for 1,300, eventually you'll get it for around 7,000. So that's you multiply basically by six your price in this case but uh, it's not always the case because some of the prices uh, expenses here are fixed so you uh, it, it doesn't multiply if you get a fifteen thousand uh, dollar land cruiser you wouldn't multiply by six to get the price once it's here but uh, it does uh, cost more to probably uh, ship it which i told you about already so there's probably a couple thousand more um, it will probably cost a little bit more to drive it and some of the other uh, fees may be higher because of the higher engine displacement uh, but that depends on the province so i was really lucky that i didn't have any repairs because imagine you bring a vehicle it has an oil leak and they tell you you have to fix it so then it's easily uh, whatever the price it is but different oil leaks can cost different uh, amounts to fix so it could be 
uh, anything from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars probably to fix a very complicated leak so it could be become really cost prohibitive so you have to watch out for those and even if you replace a boot sometimes it costs hundreds of dollars to replace a boot and if you have to replace two there you go a thousand bucks more i also was very lucky that i didn't have to um, correct my um, headlights because in japan of course they slope differently uh, for the uh, for our roads when we drive on the right side the headlights have to slope towards the left uh, slope down towards the left so you don't uh, blind the on oncoming traffic um, and some jurisdictions are very strict about this but my jurisdiction was not very strict about it and that saved me also a couple hundred dollars because i didn't have to buy uh, the headlights and this is something you have to keep in mind and ask around and go to the shop that will inspect your car um, do you want me to look at this car do you want me to replace the uh, headlights on it uh, to match the slope uh, for our roads and if they say yes uh, immediately you have to find um, those headlights uh, you cannot always adjust the slope on the um, uh, headlights so you'll have to buy used one or new ones from Europe for example Th that's a very good case to buy a vehicle like a CRV or a RAV4 uh, that you can find on our market because then you'll find lights easily on the, in the junkyard and replace it and you'll be done with it and you'll probably pay one two hundred dollars in total so that that also you have to keep that in mind and you have to ask around in your area all right thank you very much for watching keep an eye out for the next episode where i'm gonna be driving this car this car from vancouver to edmonton just from the ship nothing done to it let's see how that works out eh please don't forget to like and subscribe it helps a lot and see you in the next one